Good morning to all of you out there. Welcome to the program agenda and for being subscribers of Signal TV and watching us via One News PH Channel 8 and 250. I'm your host, Sita Beltran, and today we are uh, back here in uh, Metro Manila just for the time being where we hope to continue our broadcast. And thank you for joining us on this 19th of November, 2021. It's a weekend and I do hope you have a cause to celebrate the weekend or look forward to the weekend because for many, it seems that a Monday, a Friday, and a Saturday all look the same. However, I just encourage everyone that on Sundays is the Sabbath, the Lord's day of rest. Actually, it is the day for the Lord. So please do join us today as we interview very interesting people and uh, give you updates particularly those of you who are hoping, wishing to see your Balik Bayan relatives come back to the Philippines for Christmas. Because ayun po, no, pag-asa ng bayan para sa marami ay ang maka magkaroon ng Balik Bayan box. Anyway, uh, thank you for being with us. Now, let's start the day with our daily starter. And today's daily starter is a message I picked up on the on Facebook. If you keep the bitterness in your heart, it will be very hard for you to embrace the blessings of God. Wala pong pinagkaibyan. No different from uh, you know if you have uh, if you watch uh, husband and wife or lovers when they quarrel and one party keeps saying i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry but the other party keeps saying i hate you i hate you nothing will ever be resolved and you cannot carry on with what was essentially a good relationship same thing with our relationship with god uh, for some people bitterness creeps in crawls in takes root and takes over. Ang hira po dyan, pag namamalagi na yung pait sa puso ninyo, yung galit sa puso ninyo, hindi na makapasok yung biyaya ng Diyos. So remember that if you keep the bitterness in your heart, para kang nag-alaga ng Rottweiler at Doberman sa pintuan, wala nang makapasok. Okay? It will be very hard for you to embrace the blessings of God. Okay, so that's our daily starter for today, Friday, November 19, 2021. Let's now go to the front page of the Philippine Star. China ships use water cannon versus Philippine supply boats. Itong mga tinamaan ng ewan na Coast Guard, Chinese Coast Guard, feeling yata nila boat wash sila eh. Huh? I just thought about that because I just had my car washed today. But uh, parang feeling nila sila yung tigahugas ng mga barko ng mundo. They used water cannons to prevent two Philippine supply boats headed for the Ayungin Shoal where the Philippine uh, BRP uh, Sierra Madre has been uh, intentionally grounded to mark our territory. Eh, meron pong mga Philippine Navy Marine Shata doon. Uh, yes, there are. And they, these two supply boats were supposed to bring food, etc., etc., but these Chinese ships, uh, Coast Guard ships, Attacked. I have to call it what it is. It is an attack on the part of the Coast Guard attacking Philipp, uh, Chinese Coast Guard attacking Philippine supply boats. Now, no one may have been killed, injured, or hurt, but you know that is an attack to our sovereignty, an attack to upon our in, uh, enlisted personnel. So, yan po ay ginawa na even back in 2014, okay? When uh, the same group, Chinese Coast Guard, you will see that in the photo in the bottom, uh, also did the same thing. 
when we were having issues with uh, China regarding territory. And unfortunately, the uh, foreign ministry of China even justified what the uh, Coast Chinese Coast Guard did as uh, saying they were legally protecting our uh, territory. Kailan yung naging teritoryo? Yung 200, uh, ex- 200 mile exclusive uh, economic zone ng Pilipinas. So I hope that our uh, officials will do more than just complain. Kasi uh, siguro dapat ipatawag yung ambassador and uh, in no uncertain terms uh, make it clear to him the displeasure not just of uh, the DFA but of the Filipino people. Okay, now, uh, pero medyo on the side, ano? katakataka, bakit pag may politikang pumuputok sa Pilipinas, biglang gumagawa ng gulo itong China? Nakikisama ba sila sa Oplan destruction? Anyway, let's go to the top of the Philippine star header. Senators vow no re- re-enacted budget for 2021. Why? Because if you recall, Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana uh, came down with COVID-19 after the uh, budget hearing at the Senate. Or at least that's the presumption kasi mahirap din pong sabihin because, you know, nowadays as far as COVID is concerned, you can get in, in the air or wherever. But Secretary Lorenzana was last uh, uh, available, uh, last present at the Philippine Senate. So Senate President Vicente Tito Soto ordered the complete cleaning and disinfection of the facilities, which will delay the budget process by four days only. It will not delay it by months. So, <coughs> excuse me, four-day delay, and they expect to pass the new budget by the middle of December, if not a little earlier. <coughs> excuse me, excuse me. Okay, now let's go back to the front page of the star. Uh, the elderly and vulner- vulnerable have been urged by Dr. Ronjin Solante of the San Lazaro Hospital to please get your third shot or booster shot once it becomes available. Wag nyo na pong pag-isipan kasi baka mapaso yung inyong proteksyon from the two doses that you already got. So those of you who have had two doses uh, or been uh, double vaccinated, uh, elderly and vulnerable people with comorbidity, meron kayong asthma, hika, uh, or sakit sa puso, diabetes, meron kayong cancer, etc. Please get your third shot as soon as possible. Okay. Meanwhile, okay, oh, but nasa baba na yan. Okay, meanwhile, there is a new warning from the World Health Organization, particularly from the local representative uh, of uh, WHO regarding the uh, next potential pandemic, hindi po ito virus, okay? Experts warn AMR may be next global health emergency. What is AMR? Hindi po ito bago sa Pilipinas. Matagal na ito sa Pilipinas pero uh, walang pake ang maraming Pilipino. It is antimicrobial resistance okay meaning kakainom kakainom ng kung ano-ano ah, those of you who love to pop antibiotics like they are uh, paracetamol uh, are likely to develop this antimicrobial resistance kumbaga kakainom kakagamit ng gamot constant use use of certain medicines that should only be followed 
with doctor's prescription eh, and uh, no and uh, dosing eh ang nangyayari inaabuso okay so what happens many filipinos will be told you need to take your anti tb drug pero they will only drink it for one week and then stop or meron naman inom ng inom ng antibiotic Ha? And ayan po ang nangyayari. You will have antimicrobial resistance and in, eventually the medicines that traditionally works won't work. It gets more difficult to treat medicines. Okay, so ayan po ang uh, sabi ni WHO Country Representative Rabindra Abeya Singh that uh, 20,000 Filipino developed drug resistant tuberculosis in 2020. Okay, enough of that uh, unfortunate news. Let's now go to the Comelec announcing expanded rules on virtual campaign rallies. Okay, kasi ang mangyayari po, the Comelec will now require candidates to register. Okay, their online accounts and uh, it has to be verified and there will be rules regarding all of these campaigns and rallies, etc. due in part to the COVID-19 protocols as, as well as to prevent the abuse of social media. In particular, the Comelec said that they will not allow any material that is uh, of dubious source, untruthful, uh, disparaging, or uh, casts doubt on the integrity of the electoral process. So kung sino man ang medyo magsasabing nagkakadayaan, nagkakabentahan, etc., etc., Baka kayo po ay matake down. Okay, let's go back to the front page. Okay, <laughs> ito po. Roddy claims presidential bet using cocaine. Hindi ko na po babasahin yan. Hindi ko na po papatulan yan. Because unless the president names names, uh, names the candidate and puts, uh, puts down evidence, Mahira po yan kasi meron po sa amin, I remember at one point that some of us in media, just for introducing a news item that uh, or a news report on television, nearly got sued for libel. So ako po, hindi ko po babasahin yan unless Malacanang makes an official statement. Okay. Yan po, lesson for all of you aspiring journalists and broadcaster. On the other hand, Senator Cynthia Villar encourages OFWs and their families to join the summit. Ito po ay summit tungkol sa kabuhayan, masiglang kabuhayan sa bagong panahon which she believes is timely because Filipinos are all struggling Okay, struggling to survive and uh, okay, yan po ay medyo tingnan nyo na lang po sa https dot slash slash OFW Summit 2021. Okay, kabuhayan summit po yan. Now, Let's go to the other. Now, the good news. Okay, good news. Bacolod City has been chosen by the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry as the most business-friendly LGU in the Philippines. Okay, sila po ay kinilala. They were recognized for keeping the local economy afloat. Despite the pandemic, particularly timely intervention supporting local businesses. And may I point out that the mayor of uh, Bacolod, Mayor Evelio Leonardia, was even harshly criticized for trying to keep the business running and everything normal 
be, during the time when COVID cases were rather high in Bacolod. So ayan po, eh, may kinalabasan. Okay? Bagamat like many other places, Bacolod suffered from the, pan- from the COVID cases, at least they were able to sustain the business and got voted as business friendly LGU. Okay. Now let's go to uh Merck's anti-COVID Philippine uh, pill arrives in Philippines. Yung kanila pong molnupiravir, okay? The medicine that is uh designed to uh help patients recover <clears throat> and fight the anti- the covid virus has finally made it to the philippines and is currently available in a chain of hospitals particularly the qualimed hospital of the ayala group so uh, they are here under compassionate special permit or csp so Kahit pa paano, may pag-asa na tayo there is that uh, possibility that instead of spending days, weeks, or a month in the ICU like my uh, pastor uh, did, eh, baka maiwasan na yan with early treatment. <clears throat> the key is, the minute you feel a sim- the symptoms, get yourself tested and then avail of this treatment. Okay. Sayaw na o COVID muna. <laughs> o COVID muna to mas pa rin 1297 97 new cases all over the Philippines. That's the tally of new COVID cases 1297 and again the deaths remain very high. It is 305 Filipinos dying from COVID-19 yesterday, November 18, kahapon po yan, 305 Filipinos died, bringing us to 46,422 Filipinos ang sumalangit na wa, na tumawid na sa kabilang buhay because of COVID-19. So, reminder to all of you who are already on vacation mode, feeling like wanna be a tourist just like I do, we still need, need to wear our face mask and social distance. Yung face shield, kanya-kanya nang discard yan. Okay. <clears throat> and last but not the least, Ah, nagre-rehearse na sila. They are now rehearsing at the Cultural Center of the Philippines in Pasay City. Ballet dancers are doing their rehearsals for a future performance. Uh, the CCP is preparing to reopen live performances for its holiday presentation under alert level 2. For those of you who are inclined or curious, I really encourage parents, kung kaya naman po, please bring your children to see these performances because they are part of a holistic upbringing for our children. Kumbaga, hindi lang puro uh, online, hindi lang puro digital. Makita naman nila yung ginagawa ng aktual na tao sa pagsasayaw. Okay, now let's go to our uh, main uh, program of interviews. We have with us someone who has not sat on his laurels. Kumbaga, uh, Ano na siya, winner na siya in many rounds, many, many times over. But he continues to try to get things done for the economy, for the Filipinos at large, and for the country. We have with us Presidential Advisor for Entrepreneurship, Joey Concepcion, and also founder of Guanigo Show. Uh, good morning, Joey. Welcome back to the program. Good morning, Sito. 
Uh, well, uh, I, I was assuming that you would finally relax, maybe even uh, take a break from <laughs> all your work. But, you know, day in, day out, you keep punching and saying to the government, more, 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 open, open, more. And uh, I support you in your latest uh, endeavor, uh, one thing for Filipinos to be able to come home to the Philippines, either permanently on vacation or for r and with the least number of uh, quarantine days. What's the situation there, Joey? Well, first, Sito, we've been pounding because since, remember, in August 8th, we pushed for an early lockdown. Uh, and uh, the mayors of Metro Manila joined us for that. And not everybody in the business uh, part uh, agreed with my move. No? But it was very important for us to save the fourth quarter. And... Uh, True enough, all the research advice to us was quite accurate. Cases went up in September and a little bit in October. Then we saw, as predicted, cases falling down no, in October. So as a result, no, business is wanting to open the economy. But let me put it this way. No? We really want to do it safely and responsibly. And and uh, now we're enjoying low cases because of that uh, that act to, to shut down two weeks ahead of schedule. No? So... Uh, we are pushing. We have pushed a lot, opening the business establishments, and now they're operating at 80% uh, maximum capacity in NCR because NCR has achieved 70% fully vaccinated. We are also on the table. Uh, we have a request with uh, IATF. Uh, initially, we have been able to reduce the quarantine from 10 days no, down to uh, five days for the fully vaccinated and seven days for the uh, unvaccinated and that's ongoing right now so we're enjoying a lower quarantine but yet we need to push more to a lower level of quarantine and our suggestion was at least maybe two nights in a quarantine hotel uh, and uh, the requirement would be uh, a pcr test prior to departure of country of origin origin and upon arrival another pcr test but if they were, if they, the idea here is for them to spend the quarantine uh, time in their own respective uh, homes. No, I think it would be about seven days for fully vaccinated. So it's very clear that uh, most of this is given to the fully vaccinated uh, people coming home. And why are we doing that? Tourism is in a big problem. Secretary Byrne has been pushing very hard for this. And uh, the airlines have asked my help. No, they. We have to keep the airlines flying. Every time they're not flying, they're losing money. And mm. uh, many of them, like Paul, has filed for Chapter 11. So they have commitments. And if those commitments are not met uh, in the coming months, then they will go bankrupt and they will be closed. And we will have no airline and there will be no tourism. And uh, mobility to the different islands will be hampered with Paul out of the, out not being able to fly. So... We brought in Father Nick of Okta Research to help convince uh, and uh, Dexter of PayPal and, of course, uh, their president. So we're pushing really hard together with Supu Pacific and Asian, Air Asia as well. Okay. Uh, the, the thing about that RT-PCR, we have been talking and talking about that. And it surprises me that it is not standard. Uh, requirement uh, of the Philippine government because, uh, as you know, my wife, my daughter uh, are from Holland and uh, my daughter is studying there. You, before you leave the Philippines, you're required to have an RT-PCR. And when you arrive in the Netherlands, it is an optional test. But the basis of that proof of that determination is if you tested negative when before you boarded, you are presumed relatively safe upon landing. And, of course, they will check on you three days after. Uh, why are we not just simply making that part of the protocol? Well, you know, it, it depends. Like, for example, in America, prior to departure to America, you have to take an RT-PCR test. If you are not fully vaccinated, you will not be allowed entry to America. Many countries are doing this right now. Uh, the reason why we proposed uh, uh, a PCR test prior to departure of country of origin and upon arrival is to really persuade uh, uh, the medical advisors of IDF to to allow this. No, uh, to me, I think this can all be adjusted. I think what uh, fears them most is uh, the level of infection. Although it is barely one person in a plane that would get infected. No, first studies mm -hmm. over a five-month period, and that was presented to them. 
but of course they are conservative. So just to make this thing work, uh, we're just trying to get some wins no? and uh, allow the Filipinos to come home because there's so many people wanting to come home to see their loved ones. Many loved ones have passed away in this pandemic mm -hmm. and let them reunite. They have not seen their families for the last two years. No? Children who are studying abroad would also want to spend Christmas in, in the Philippines, no? but not in a hotel. Yeah, uh, I know that uh, you do your homework and your team do, do does their work diligently. Uh, I think the best argument are facts. And have there been uh, cases that would cause us to believe that allowing people to fly in and have shorter stays in quarantine, etc., have resulted in disaster? Because parang wala naman kami na didinig na bad news sa media. And uh, are we becoming overly conservative? Because, you know, it's easy to be conservative if it doesn't cost you. But if it costs yeah. you billions, it, that, that is not fair. Yeah, it's, it's true. But, uh, you know, uh, in, in working with IDF, it's, uh, we try to achieve a win-win. And uh, their level of comfort will come. Uh, right now, we have proposed that the yellow countries be given the same privilege as green countries which I think they're open to. So it's not only North America will be allowed to come in. There will be other countries. So uh, they're open to certain things. They want to take certain precaution. Yes, there'll be more testing, but eventually this testing uh, uh, can go down. Uh, then even the number of days can go down. If we are able, they, if they see during this pilot uh, period that uh, it does work. No? So initially they'd like to be more cautious about it, which I think I'm fine. And, uh, and then we move on. Let's get the Filipinos home. Uh, it will still be cheaper to test and rather than stay in a hotel for that long. And worst part, you just waste your time in a hotel rather than be with your family, which is your primary objective. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I think this is how we are able to work with the IATF. It's a matter of trying to find an, a, a solution that, that will get it going and then adjust along the way. So it's come a long way you know, from... Yeah. Total, uh, very high quarantine now down to uh, five and seven days, no? and hopefully down to maybe two nights. No, and the moment you get your RT PCR test, then you can leave the hotel. No, what, what about that two night uh, goal that you're shooting for? You are ba basically you and the business sector, because let's clarify, ladies and gentlemen, this is not just Joey Conception talking, uh, he is representing hundreds of companies and many industries trying to revive our economy. Now, as far as targets go, Joey, what what is the possibility that the quarantine levels will be down to only two nights stay in a hotel? And also, uh, what would be the points of origin of Filipinos or others coming into the country that will be allowed? Well, right now, the ask is for North America and Canada, but I was told that they are willing to open it up to more of the countries in the yellow. Uh, so uh, this may include uh, countries in Europe, countries in London, uh, where, I mean, Filipinos, basically. So uh, I, I'm optimistic that uh, something will arrive. Hopefully, they are supposed to be looking at this this week, you know, Thursday or Friday, uh, it's we're running out of time because many Filipinos would like to buy their tickets this early already, and uh, I, another reason why they also have to bring down the quarantine time is uh, we're back to staycations. A lot of Filipinos want to go to hotels on a weekend and mm -hmm. uh, have their own little vacation there with family, so that's open up and uh, uh, that will uh, eat into the rooms for quarantine. So. We really have to move, and it's every country in the world is starting to bring down uh, all of this. You no, know? Thailand, Singapore, to some extent, uh, even India, uh, all over Europe, they're bringing it down, and America is bringing it down. But you must be fully vaccinated. No? Okay, uh, how how well monitored are things? Because another fear that was expressed or shared to me uh, was that. We're willing to go back to the Philippines. The Philippines is probably safer or just as safe as uh, some other countries. 
but how well monitored are cases in the country because their fear is baka ma-lockdown sila dito. Kasi dito walang ano eh, walang mga last two minutes, you know, biglang, sorry, it's lockdown tomorrow, you can't leave the country. Well, I think, you know, Gonegosha partnered with Okta Research and you see them every day in the newspaper, they're like the Weather Bureau of Health, no? Mm -hmm. And we have great experience with this organization. So while uh, we are on a downward trend, uh, they are giving us daily reports on areas that are quite risky. No? And uh, we are watching them. And the moment something change, then we will be monitoring them. I think what we want to preserve really is the continuity of uh, where we are enjoying right now, cases going down. But yes, Sito, with greater mobility, there is possibility that cases will go up. But I've been mm -hmm. always telling them that even if cases go up, why did we buy the vaccines? The va vaccination prevents hospitalization. We must remember that. If those that are getting sick are the vaccinated, then there is no need to worry. Even if you have 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 cases, people get sick with the flu. So they will be treated at home. Now, if the cases are going up, because of the due to the unvaccinated out there, then we will be in trouble because the hospitals will come again and get full and then we will be forced to lock down. So that is why Secretary Galvez and the team and us in the private sector are pursuing relentlessly to ensure that what NCR has done a great job. Now, the mayors in NCR were over 90% mm -hmm. cases are going down. We need to replicate that all over the country. That will secure our long term 2022 is very important not just christmas christmas it's a done deal we're going to have a merry christmas now are we going to have a better 2022 new year because many of the negotiantes especially especially the small ones cannot anymore draw money from the banks because they have maxed out their credit lines they have lost a lot of money hopefully the fourth quarter helps them rebound but then again you know it's not enough so the economy has to be open even the LGUs in the national government cannot sustain something like this. Where will they get the revenues to pay for all their uh, their employees, their medical requirements? I mean, this is trillions that we are spending in this health crisis. No? And it won't end because the boosters are next and there are more drugs that are coming in. But definitely mm -hmm. the light is getting bigger in the tunnel. And I think we have a better chance if we really vaccinate to the max all of those, especially in the provincial areas, which the hesitancy is very high at 30% in some areas, Luzon, besides Mindanao, so it's between 20 to 30%. That's very high. The private sector experienced the same thing, a 40% vaccine hesitancy. The way we solved it, the CEOs, the managers, the supervisors, and our foremen went down and talked to all of those who didn't want to take the, the vaccine. And we told them, if you don't take the vaccine, you may be isolated by your own peers because they think that you will contaminate them. And now IATF just came out with uh, a, 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 a what do you call, implementation that uh, those who have not taken the vaccines, employees who have not taken the vaccines, will be mandated to take a weekly test at their own expense. That is going to cost the employee about 40,000 pesos for that test, whether it's antigen or PCR. No? Okay, now, uh, what about in the provinces? Uh, or Well, first of all, what about public information? Because you guys, the IATF, you, Go Negosho, and the private sector, you've all done a great job in cooperating and opening up the economy, lifting restrictions, and bringing down the cases along with the DOH. Now, what about sustaining the message? Because there are many of us who feel... We are like wolves howling in the wilderness, ika nga. No? Para lang kami mga asong kumakahol, nagpapaalala that, you know, there is still COVID lurking in the dark or even in broad daylight. And what worries many people, and I've heard this repeated time and again, Joey, yes, we're going to have a Merry Christmas, but chances are, we might all end up being in lockdown in January, paying for our sins. Parang, is there already a program in the in the works or in place to do a massive campaign? Because even the government seems to be, you know, uh, lacking in this uh, messaging aspect of reminding people we're not out of the woods and there are wolves. 
Well, you can see, you no, know, Secretary Gal, people doubt whether Secretary Galvez can bring the vaccines in, in the country. Now mm. we have a lot of supply. I saw the yeah. list of uh, vaccines in the Philippines and arriving. So it's here. It's huge. It is one thing that is concerning is because if Visayas has 30% vaccine hesitancy, the balance Luzon has 24% vaccine hesitancy, vaccine hesitancy. Mindanao is 19%, NCR has 5%. See, the reason why NCR is successful because the hesitancy was only 5%. Unless we're able to solve the, the Visayas, the balance of Luzon and Mindanao, which is high, to bring that down to 5%, then it's going to be a challenge. Then we will waste all those vaccines. So what is the government trying to do now with mandating employees to take the vaccines or take a test weekly will force the employees to, to be serious about it because this is not about my right. It is the, the common good that we have to help. The, the, everybody has to play in this game. There is no other solution, but the vaccine has to be implemented in a very fast way. And uh, that's why we have pro the pro-vax to the max. The national government has this three-day program where they're targeting, I think, 15 million people. Mm. And uh, we're serious about it because if we don't succeed here, yes, this is a, going to be a temporary thing. What we see today is going to be temporary if we fail to vaccinate the greater population. We're still a long way with Visayas, Luzon, and Mindanao. No? It's only NCR that achieved victory. And uh, the next area for NCR is the booster shots. But out there, they are not yet hitting the levels of 70%. So areas that will not hit the levels of 70% will not be able to move and bring down their alert levels. No, they will be stuck. Only in NCR that we are seeing alert level two because we have hit 70% fully vaccinated. And eventually to get to alert level one, the condition I'm told is that all the seniors we must hit also 70% for the seniors. You know, Mas Mahira, it's easy to hit 70% of the population, but the seniors now that we're going to target to hit 70%, and I think NCR is close to it, then we can move to alert level one. So even if we say we want alert level one, it's not for the entire Philippines. The chances are it's going to be maybe for uh, NCR and possibly some areas in Cebu and other areas that are already at that level of 70%. Would you support a really strong or harsh, in the words of others, a harsh mandate, harsh mandate na no vax, no entry anywhere, period? Because, you know, you were talking about employers, employers telling employees to get vaccinated or get an RT-PCR. I have met employ employers, Joey, and uh, I have to, I had to hold my tongue, but, you know, Sila na yung employer, sila pa yung ayaw magpabakuna. And, and you're right, you know, it's not in NCR, it's out there. This was a South Luzon area. And, and I just got, went back to the car and I said, I don't even want to talk to that guy because uh, he doesn't realize he's not the only risk, he's also risking his employees. Yeah, well, there's still a number of anti vax out there you know, who are spreading the wrong information, and that's what we're trying to uh, fend off. And, uh, and I hope these people stop because, uh, you know, the country is where it is right now. Uh, we wonder why are we really rating low in terms of, you know, achieving COVID success. It's because we need the concerted, and our Filipinos should be concerned about it. We're at war with COVID. And if you don't take the weapon, which is the vaccine, how are we going to win if only a few go, I mean, a few go to war carrying the vaccine? So this is a main thrust of uh, IATF led by Secretary Galvez. The private sector is in full support. While you have all of these uh, Merck drugs coming in, the monoclonal antibodies of uh, AstraZeneca, etc., all of these new uh, methods of helping uh, re helping people recover if they have COVID. Uh, uh, yet the basic uh, element is the vaccines. All over the world, everybody is trying to race towards that. Now, people are now clamping on. America is very strict right now. If you're not vaccinated, you can't go to concerts, you can't go to uh, restaurants, many areas. That is, should be the mode here. Areas that are high risk for public people. If you're not vaccinated, you're not allowed entry. Likewise, I mean... Uh, to me, LGUs, you can't get to the tourist destinations if you're not fully vaccinated. I believe in that rule. So certain mm -hmm. certain uh, mayors and uh, are, may implement this. They're, now they're already waiving the PCR test. No? 
for the fully vaccinated who are traveling. The radical approach is uh, those traveling to different uh, uh, provinces, uh, the mayor should maybe lock those out who are not uh, vaccinated, except for those who live there and who are uh, even unvaccinated since the point of residence, but maybe okay. we can block the tourists who are not uh, vaccinated. Okay, so incentivize by being stricter. Anyway, uh, Joey, thank you very much for your time. And once again, we really appreciate your persistence, your consistency, and your determination to uh, bring our country back up on its feet. And wakang uh, tatakbong senador, please, huh? We need you where you are, and we can work together. Thank you I've very much. God bless. For the last sixteen years, <laughs> yeah, you Thank and you. me both. God bless you, bro. Okay, yeah. that's Mr. Thank Joey you. Concepcion, presidential advisor for entrepreneurship. Dapat yung baguhe ng title, eh, Mr. Solutions and Persistence. Okay, let's go for a quick break, and when we come back, let's uh, talk. Bring in, uh, bring in the Mary, Mary. Merry Christmas uh, cheers. Well, I don't know if it's cheer, pero uh, usapang Christmas naman po tayo. We'll be right back here on Agenda. Welcome back to the program agenda, and I am happy to announce Tuloy Parin po ang Pasko. Okay, Tuloy Parin ang Pasko, and in fact, may movement kami sa MVP group of families or group of companies and a uh, uh, family of companies. What, however you want to say, but that Tuloy Parin ang Pasko. And today we are going to speak to, with someone who is the president of the One Meralco Foundation. He has a bachelor's art uh, in community BA in uh, business uh, uh, BA uh, oh well BA communication UST cumlaude lang naman Master of Sustainable Development from the Macquarie University in Sydney Australia. He is a Australia Award Scholar, Lecturer, College of Commerce and Business Administration of UST, and was the re, uh, recognized as the Young uh, Thomasian Young Achiever in 2008. Let's bring in Jeffrey Tarayao. Jeffrey, good morning to you. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> medyo open timing nung aming plug oh, <laughs> na, na. <laughs> Magandang umaga, Sir Sito. Tuloy na tuloy ang Pasko. Nakita mo naman sa opening pa lang. Pa pasensya ka na, Jeffrey. Sintonado ako. Wala ako sa timing kasi, you know, I have traditionally been labeled the Grinch in my family. Kumbaga, pagdating ng Pasko, mainitin ang ulo ko. <laughs> but not, not because I am anti-Christmas, but I guess, you know, I am one of those who still seek the, you know, the... Uh, the old symbols, the old uh, values of Christmas, of family, and of, you know, of spending time with uh, each other. And, of course, giving to, to the less fortunate. And yes. balita ko kayo dyan sa One Miralco Foundation last year, 
namigay kayo ng pagkain ba yun? Uh, or gift basket ang pinamigay niyo? Oh. Oh. Noong isang taon, sinimula natin itong tuloy pa rin ng Pasko Movement na banggit mo nga na ito ay proyekto ng uh, MVP Group, no? mga companies, sa mga foundations, tayong lahat. Tayong uh, mga magkakapatid nag-decide, uh, no? Tandaan natin, no, isang taon parang survival mode yung Pasko natin. Hindi natin alam kung magkakaroon ba tayo ng usual na Pasko na sineselebrate natin o hindi. Kaya nagsama-sama tayo noon, uh, namigay tayo ng mga Noche Buena Packs no, sa maraming-maraming Pilipino, lalong-lalo na dun sa mga nagugutom at sa ating mga frontliners at sa kanilang mga pamilya. Ngayong taon na to, uh, tayo ay mag expand in the entire group na mamimigay ng iba't ibang uh, pamasko, no? Andun pa rin ang Noche Buena kasi hindi naman kompleto ang ating Pasko, ang Pilipino, kung hindi kakain ng masaya kasama ang pamilya. So, mm-hmm. mamimigay pa rin tayo nun. Um, ilan sa ating mga kumpanya at saka foundations ay mamimigay din ng mga livelihood programs. No? Mm-hmm. At uh, patuloy pa rin yung support to our frontliners, pamimigay ng PPE o pagkain para sa kanilang mga pamilya. Um, ano pa ba? Uh, tinutulungan din natin ang ating mga uh, magsasaka, no? Uh, binibili natin ang kanilang mga uh, produce at yun ang ipamimigay natin ngayong Pasko. Kami sa One Meralco Foundation, uh, minarapat namin na uh, mas malapit no o malapit sa aming ginagawa sa Meralco ang gagawin namin ngayong Pasko. Papa, no? Ang ating uh, electrification program. Itong ginagawa natin, meron tayong electrification for low-income households uh, para sa mga schools na napakalalayo, yung mga off-grid at remote uh, schools dahil nagpapalit yan ang ating mga estudyante sa paaralan soon, di ba? Jeffrey, mabuti na banggit mo yan, brother. Kasi alam mo, uh, ayun, sana walang magalit sa akin sa Meralco o sa kung sino man. Ano. Ako, ay, uh, this is a sincere idea eh, you know, and I mean well. Kasi alam mo, uh, parang le- recent convert ako ng solar power. Mm-hmm. And, and in fact, nag-aral ako sa Meralco. Eh. Nag-aral ako dun sa pahirap pang ang dami-daming mathematics and uh, equation just sa solar uh, uh, electrification no talagang pinahirapan niyo ako mga kayo, kayo talaga anyway the, the thing is i'm a convert believer in solar and yes. na realize ko na uh, for the amount of 1900 may makakabili ka na ng isang panel at isang spotlight at pwede mo nang ilagay yun. Kasi sa totoo lang, ha, naglagay ako doon sa mga banyo namin para kung sakaling biglang mag-blackout, mm-hmm. eh may ilaw. At sa gabi, hindi ka bukas ng bukas ng ilaw. Laging may ilaw. <coughs> so, I was just thinking, is this going to be part of your uh, electrification program? Kasi maraming lugar, mamumulubi naman ng Meralco kung magpapakuryente kayo, no? maglalagay kayo ng cable sa kung saan-saan liblib na po. Oo, oh. oh, alam mo, um, uh, yung ating ginagawang electrification program, lalo na sa mga school, simulat, nung sinimulan nitong proyektong ito 10 years ago, solar hmm. na talaga ang ginagamit natin. Dahil Ayaw. yun lamang ang solusyon na available sa kanilang area. Napakalalayo kasi nila, hindi natin ma-extend o hindi ma-extend ng local electric cooperative mm. ang mga linya ng kuryente. Talagang matagal bago mangyari yan. So alang nga namang magsakripisyo ang ating mga estudyante at, at ating mga guro. Kaya minarapat natin na sa loob ng sampung taon, ginagawa na natin itong pro- programang ito. Solar ang nilalagay natin sa mga... At saka, di ba, may, merong solar company ang MVP Group. Alam ko, na-interview ko yes. pa sa agenda oh. yung presidente ng uh, solar company na yun. Spectrum, no? Spectrum, ang pangalan oh. ng ating kumpanya. Oo. At kasama natin palagi yan kapag nagpapailaw tayo, Ay. nagkakala tayo ng solar. Al- alam ko, inuuna ninyo, Jeffrey, inuuna ninyo yung malayong lugar, no? Kasi siyempre, hmm. sila yung mga dihado lagi. Pero... Baka pwede kayong gumawa na parang ano uh, uh, 50% of offer. Diyan ba dyan sa... <laughs> hindi, hindi. Diyan sa may... Anong tawag nito? Addition Hills. At saka dyan sa may Tondo. Yung laging nasusunugan dahil mm. kandila. Mm. Eh, ako parang panaginip ko na lang. And I know MVP, the MVP group of companies share that. No? Na parang... Sana in the next 2 to 3 years matigil na yung mga sunog na yan dyan sa mga 
Uh, ano, mga pasensya na po, no? wala naman akong insulto dito. Yung mga squatters area, kumbaga, yung tinatawag nila, illegal settlers. Pareho na rin yun, eh. mabuti pa nga. Informal settlers. Uh, informal settlers. <laughs> Ayun, pasensya na, no? Hindi ako politically correct, matanda na ako eh. But anyway, uh, ayoko ma-shanghai yung, ma, ano, ma-hijack yung ating, ano, ating interview. Pero yun na lang, no? pakisingit lang yun kasi... Talaga dumudugo puso ko every December may sunog diyan. Ayun na naman tayo. Anyway, okay, go ahead Jeffrey. So, meron kayong mga electrification, rural area, etc. Oh, sa totoo lang, alam mo nitong weekend na to ay uh, ilan sa ating mga kasama sa One Branco Foundation ay magtutungo sa El Nido sa Palawan at hindi ito doon sa mga resorts ng El Nido ha. Doon sa mga librado kayo ha. Sa El Nido. O, May mga tatu- spiya ako doon. Pasusundan ko kayo. <laughs> pupwedeng, pupwedeng sumama pa ang iyong mga espiya dahil sa tingin ko marami silang matututunan sa tatlong barangay na ating pupuntahan sa El Nido at mamimigay tayo ng solar lamps para sa ating mga kababayan doon na mga ano, fishermen, no? ang mga mangingisda na pwede nilang gamitin kapag sila'y nangingisda sa gabi. Mm-hmm. So yan ang ating pamaskong handog sa kanila. Um, ito, ginagawa ng One Meralco Foundation bilang bahagi nung para bang recovery ng ating mga kababayan no? nung isang taon para tayong survival. Ngayon ay nagre-recover tayo. Mm-hmm. At itong uh, pamamahagi natin ng solar lamps para sa mga uh, fisher folks ay sa tingin namin makakatulong para mas madagdagan ang kanilang o mas mapabuti ang kanilang ginagawa kapag sila ay nangingisda. Okay. Ano pa yung mga ibang activities na ka-line up ang ating tuloy pa rin, uh, tuloy pa rin ang Pasko program? Marami no, sa ating um, mga iba't ibang kumpanya at foundation sa MVP Group. Yun nga ang nabanggit ko noon na mamim- patuloy tayong mamimigay ng mga Noche Buena Packs, mm-hmm. uh, livelihood programs at uh, tutulungan natin ng mga uh, magsasaka na maibig- mabibili natin ang kanilang mga produce, no? lalo na yung mga uh, bigas. At yan ay pamimigay natin ngayong Pasko para matulungan naman natin ang kabuhayan nila. At hindi lamang ito uh, gawain ng um, mga kumpanya o ng mga foundation, yung mga empleyado ng Meralco at ang mga business partners, even our customers like nung isang taon, ay tumulong sila sa movement na ito. Ang importante dito, Sir Sito, yung konsepto at ideya ng pagbabahagi no? o yung bayanihan. Hmm. Kaya nga sinasabi natin ngayong taon ito, eh, maligayang bayanihan Pilipino bilang tema ng uh, pag-celebrate natin ang Pasko. Mm-hmm. Eh, mabuti sinabi mo yun, Jeffrey, because uh, ladies and gentlemen, I was just listening to a podcast preaching this morning and yung napakinggan ko sinabi nga, first of all, In order to be a blessing to others, you yourself must be blessed, okay? And uh, maniwala po tayo na tayo ay bibiyayaan ng Panginoon. We, God wants to bless us, pero wag naman po kayo magmukmuk sa lugar na lang at sabihin talunan ako. Kasi kahit po yung mga tinatawag nga ni Jeffrey na nandu doon sa mga ano, liblib na po, Tuloy pa rin ang laban nila, hindi lang Pasko. Tuloy ang laban nila, nagpapalaot sila kada madaling araw. They go fishing, uh, yung iba go spear fishing o namamana para may maiuwing pagkain at konting pambenta. E tayong nasa Metro Manila kung minsan nakahiga ka na sa magandang kutsyon, maangal ka pa. Okay, so first you, you will be blessed to be a blessing. And if you are blessed, it is not so that you can be rich and prosperous. It is so you can bless others. Okay, so natatandaan ko last year, uh, Jeffrey, may mga kasama nga tayo na sila mismo nag, uh, nag-sponsor ng uh, mga pamimigay doon sa iba-ibang foundation ng MVP Group. Totoo yan. Ano? Uh, ako, natutuwa ako kasi sa, ano, sa mga um, uh, empleyado namin sa Meralco, for example, no? Uh, na kasama din sa nahirapan nung isang taon. No? May mga kanya-kanyang struggles din tayo. Pero kahit papano, kahit maliit, kapag Pasko naman walang malaki o maliit. Eh. Ang importante mm. yung pagbabayanihan, eh, bukal sa ating kalooban. At uh, itong movement ng tuloy pa rin ng Pasko, eh, nakakapagbigay ng opportunities para sa lahat ng tao na makapagbahagi kung ano man ang meron sila. Wala naman tayong... Mm 
limit, wala rin naman tayong ito ang dapat ang iyong ibigay. Kung ano ang kaya mong ibigay, yun ay ipapamahagi natin sa ating mga kababayang na nangangailangan. Okay, so maliban sa mga an- ano, pagdadala nyo ng solar lights, rural electrification, mm-hmm. paano yung mga estudyante? Meron ba kayong programa para dun sa mga magbabak to school o yung mga nag-online school? I, I don't know, no? Kasi pasensya mm-hmm. ka na, Jeffrey, syempre kung ano yung malapit sa puso ko, yan yung mga natatanong ko kahit na ikaw ay may mga mayroon kayong mga topics, suggested topics eh. Hindi, kailangan malaman ko paano yung mga estudyante. Totoo yan. Alam mo, alam na alam natin na magbabalikan na ang mga, pa, ang mga estudyante sa paaralan. Kaya noon pa man, alam mo, ilang taon na na ang mga empleyado ng Meralco ay nagbabahagi ng uh, back to school kits para okay. sa ating mga kababayan. Ito, alimbawa, for example, uh, 13th month pay o may bonus, Christmas bonus, bahagi ng kanilang uh, tawag dito ng kanilang bonus ay freely voluntarily binibigay nila sa mga proyekto ng One Meralco Foundation para sa ating mga bata itong mga nakaraang taon for example uh, tumulong tayo sa mga guro no dahil alam natin during the pandemic itong mga teachers sila lang ang pumapasok sa paaralan di ba mm-hmm. uh, at sila itong uh, um, nangangailangan ng mga PPEs ng mga kailangang uh, pang pangprint dahil sa modular learning. So silang tinulungan natin. Pero ngayon magbabalik na ang ating mga estudyante sa paaralan, lalo na yung mga maliliit na ano na mga estudyante. Meron tayong mga back to school kits, notebooks, lunch boxes, um, uh, papers, pencils, lahat ito, no, backpack. Uh, at madalas ito ay uh, uh, binibigay ng ating mga empleyado. Okay, now para dun sa mga viewers natin, Uh, na medyo okay naman ang buhay nila or meron silang konting pwedeng i-share, how can they be part of the tuloy pa rin ang Pasko program? O, oh, tayo, marami tayong gagawing uh, promotions at advertisement tungkol sa pro- programang ito, no? At hmm. uh, kami naman sa One Miracle Foundation, makikita nyo kami sa aming Facebook page o sa aming web page. Uh, One Meralco Foundation at dyan mag-message lang kayo sa amin at maibibigay namin ang mga paraan kung paano sila makatulong sa atin. Pero on, on, pasi, ikaw naman bata eh, eh palibasa ikaw ang teki, uh, kami hindi. Alam mo kami hindi kami masyadong mahilig sa mga website, website na yan. Ano ba yung mga pag pwedeng pamilian? Uh, just quickly, total, meron ka pa nung uh, a few minutes. O, ang um, well, ang Noche Buena Pax, no? Pupwede kayong hmm. magtungo sa sa One Meralco Foundation. May opisina kami dito sa Ortigas, no? At ang ating mga kapatid sa MVP Group, sa PLDT Smart, um, mm-hmm. sa Maynilad, uh, even dito sa TV5, uh, sa Signal, um, mm-hmm. maaaring makipag-ugnayan uh, sa kanila dahil kanya-kanya tayo ng mga proyekto. Okay. Pinag- G- ganito na lang. Ganito na lang, Jeffrey. Siguro susunod, imbitahin kita ulit. Pero ang suggestion ko, gumawa kayo ng barang ano ba, kumbaga package program. Yes. If you give us 1,500, it will buy a cell phone or, or uh, etc. etc. para doon sa mga estudyante na sa uh, nag-aaral. Or for so and so. Parang yung mga sponsorship ba sa Amerika. Uh, for this amount, you can be the sponsor of one solar light for one family. Kasi syempre, Yes, uh, may kaya ang One Meralco Foundation. Marami tayong generous partners and family members. Pero siyempre, maraming Pilipino may puso eh. May pusong magbigay. Let us enable them with that possibility. Totoo yan. Alam mo, ang Noche Buena package na ating ino-offer, for example, ay nagkakahalagang 500 pesos. At yung solar no? lamps... Opo. At ang okay. solar lamps, uh, minimum 500, no? meron na tayong mabubuo. At uh, solar lamps ay also 500 pesos. Uh, kaya marami oh. magkakakakon para sa ating mga uh, kababayan na maging bahagi ng movement na ito. Okay. Mag-usap tayo, pare ko. Kasi ako, sasama na ako sa tutulong kasi iba yan. Uh, the, the solar lamp, more than anything, can change the life of a student, the life of a fisherman, and pati na yung nasa kalsada na naglalakad sa dilim. Kasi doon sa lugar namin, medyo madilim, doon sa probinsya, pinalagyan ko ng konting solar lamps para naman yung mga bata 
ay safe silang nagtatawid dun sa paligid. Okay, Jeffrey, thank you very much for your effort and One Meralco Foundation and the tuloy pa rin ang Pasko program. Uh, balik kayo dito sa agenda and we will be more than happy to accommodate you to talk more about this as Christmas approaches and beyond Christmas. Maraming salamat at maligayang Pasko sa iyo, Sito, at sa ating mga kababayan. Good morning. Okay, yan po si Ginoong Jeffrey Tarayao, One Meralco Foundation President. They have a website. And now, I leave you with our blessing for the week. Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. From the third book of John, Chapter 1, verse 2. Thank you very much for joining us this week. And please include me in your prayers along with my family. And uh, kasi po tayo naman ay dumadaan din sa kumbaga, pagsubok from time to time. And your prayers are much coveted. I hope you have a great weekend. Enjoy the blessings of the Lord in your life. And remember, you are blessed to be a blessing. Thank you and God uh, Godspeed. Please keep it here on One News PH.